Hello and welcome to the definitive guide for Google Classroom. This tutorial is going to cover everything from A to Z, both from the student parent side and the teacher construction side. I'm Professor Nez. I've been teaching online, hybrid learning, blended learning, distance learning, remote learning for over 20 years. And um, if you're looking for specific tutorials from either or side or something more geared towards a feature, I'm going to leave links to that in the description down below. Without further ado, let's jump right into it and go to the screen. I watched pretty much every video that you can find online about this topic and I've absorbed everything that I feel works and I've discarded and even touched upon some things that I think were left out. Welcome to the ultimate Google Classroom tutorial to help you with your online learning, distance learning and remote learning. Let's jump right into it here. You can see the first step uh, and I'm going to leave links in the description. Um, for, you know, timestamps and also different uh, resources and different videos related to Google Classroom. Uh, and so the first thing you want to do is you want to sign in to your Google G Suite account. If you're a student, a parent, or teacher, um, you should have access to a free Gmail account. But uh, the real advantage here is, is going through your educational G Suite account through your institution. And then once you get logged in, the first thing you want to do is click on Google Apps, this little kind of hamburger looking triple dot uh, uh, item right here, and just click on that. And then what you're going to do is scroll down to the very bottom and you're going to hit Google Classroom right there. That's what you're going to click. And once you click on that, you're going to be taken to this screen right here. And so uh, this is this is the kind of entry point to Google Classroom. It'll ask you if you want to continue as this account or that account or whatever account you want to uh, join as. And then you just click on continue right there. OK, and that's going to take you right here. OK, and then we're going to jump right into it. So. The first thing that you want to do is that, especially if you're a teacher, if you're a teacher or a student, you're going to click on this plus sign over here in the top right, and you're going to see two options. One of them is going to be join class. That would be for students. So for students and parents, you want to click on join class, and then you're going to be asked to type in the class code to join that class. And I'll touch upon that more a little bit later. Uh, and so that you parents and students can uh, clearly understand what it takes to, and it's very, very simple, very, very easy how to join uh, um, a class that uh, your teacher has assigned on Google Classroom. But for, um, for our purposes right now, um, so I'm going to I'm going to talk about how you can create a class right now and then I'll talk about I'm going to give you two perspectives, the student perspective and the teacher perspective so that parents, guardians, students and teachers can all get something out of this tutorial. This is going to be the ultimate guide. So click on create class. You're going to click on that right there and you can edit this information later, but this window is going to pop up right here. And what you want to do is you want to type in the name of your class, right? So I'm just going to say most of the class that I teach are business communication courses. Um, I teach um, digital media. Also, sometimes I teach creative writing and even um, English composition and rhetoric. Uh, but most of the classes that I teach are business communication. So I'm going to just type in business communication and then this will be just a demo for our purposes here in this tutorial. And if you want to type in section, subject, and room, you can do all that. And again, you can also edit this anytime you want. So you don't have to worry about doing this right now. And then what you want to do is just click on create right there. So you're going to click on create and your classroom is going to start creating. And once it's done creating and building your class, this is what you're going to see. And you also get these helpful hints from Google. Um, if you're used to any kind of LMS system, i.e. Blackboard, Canvas, Moodle, or what have you, this is going to be really, really easy and simple. As I said before, if you are technically deficient like I am, I am not the most technical person on the planet, not even close by a long shot, you're going to get a lot out of this. This is going to be simple and easy and fast, okay? So you're going to see a, a lot of pop-ups from LinkedIn right here. You'll see here it's what's new in Classroom. It'll talk to you about some latest changes, some settings, um, how you can customize certain aspects. Uh, we'll talk about everything in this tutorial. So you're going to you're gonna figure out exactly what you need to do. But so you're going to see right here at the very top, 
You're going to see the name of my class. You can even put your name there. And uh, you can see right here, I'm going to zoom in on this. This is the class code right here. And so if you click on this um, box right here, okay, you're going to see that you can actually, um, you can actually just copy this. Okay, um, you can click on this and just copy this and send it to your student. Um, and that's the code that you're going to type in. And again, I'll show you the student view in, a, in just a second. Um, that is, and this is really for security purposes. So nobody can, um, nobody can actually join your class or uh, be in your class who does not have the, the password. And so this, this prevents a lot of security breaches. We also have, and I'm thinking about doing another video. Let me know in the, in the description down below an ability to use Google's version basically of Zoom. Uh, and I've got videos in the description that talk about how to use Zoom for online learning too. But this, um, generate this Google Meet link. I'm gonna talk about this and also the beautiful changes that um, have just been released and beautiful features that have just been released related to Google Meet. And you're gonna get a ton out of that because Google Meet is, is something that you can integrate in your Google Classroom that will help you to create that sort of real time, interactive, engaging uh, uh, classroom that's, that I truly believe in my heart of hearts. If you really follow this tutorial and take heed of everything that I'm going to tell you and, and really immerse yourself in this and don't get hung up on the technical aspects, don't overthink anything, you're going to find this actually to be very, very powerful and maybe in some respects even more effective than in-person teaching. I mean that. I stand by that. After doing this for over 25 years, I've done both in-person, on-site, hybrid, online, 100% online, 50% online. I've done everything. I'm telling you right now, it, this is super, super easy. So at the top here, you're going to also see these two um, tabs right here, select theme and upload a photo. You can change this background. So if you don't have a photo that's maybe a more, um, you know, uh, personalized and customized, maybe a picture of your classroom or a picture of, you know, uh, your specific, uh, you know, your face or, or even, you know, just uh, uh, some pictures and stills of, of you know, a great way to, so your, your students and parents can identify who you are. Just click on select theme and watch this. You're going to be able to select from a multitude of themes in different categories. So you kind of have these general themes, which I have this general theme, obviously, that just automatically populated. But check it out. If you're an English or history teacher, look at this. You can change your themes to make it more recognizable and more uh, suited for your topic, more aligned with what you're teaching, math and science. You don't, it, you don't have to make it more complicated, but I think the more customized that you uh, create your classroom, the more it's just going to feel more personal, more intimate for you and your students, more importantly for your students and the parents. So anyway, you can pick any theme that you want. Uh, sports and it, there's even a category here for other so let's say you're teaching an economics course I mean that maybe this dollar one would be kind of cool uh, you know you got the uh, uh, any kind of theme that you want I'm gonna go back to English history and I'm just gonna type in because I mostly do communications business communications I'll use this theme right here and then you would click on select class theme and boom, there you go, it changes automatically, okay? Now, there's four categories here at the very top that are really important to kind of understand. We're gonna go through each one. So stream is essentially this kind of home page or home feed where all of your communications, your announcements, your posts, think of it sort of like a Facebook news feed or a LinkedIn news feed or an Instagram news feed, some type of social media news feed. It's basically the main hub. It's the main uh, kind of distribution center for all the information that's shared in your class, okay? That's that first kind of category, stream. The next category is classwork. And this is where you can kind of create, look at this, Google Meet is already integrated into your um, into your Google Classroom, which is just phenomenal. Google Calendar, Class Drive, I'll talk about all this. Guys, this is super, super easy, and you're gonna be able to follow this step by step. It's gonna be very, very easy. This is where you can create, okay? You're gonna be able to create your assignments, create your topics, and organize your classwork de depending on weeks, topics, schedules, courses, materials, everything, okay? So that's gonna be a really important tab. The next tab is people. 
Okay. And this is where you're going to be able to, let's say you wanted to add, you know, um, if you have like a teacher's assistant or another fellow admin that you wanted to, uh, you know, add to this, you're collaborating with another teacher, perhaps on a course, a project or what have you. This is a great way you can just click on invite teacher. You type in their email, boom, you add them and then they have access to the course. Okay. Now uh, I'm going to add so I can really show you um, and, and, you know, here's another way too. So you see th this little, this little, um, this little uh, uh, caption here, invite students or give them the class code. So if you don't want to deal with emailing the class code and what have you, and you just want to actually do this, you know, prehand, and so you don't have to worry about, um, you know, having to email codes or people typing in the wrong code or it not working and getting a bunch of emails from parents, students, and what have you saying it's not working. So you can just click on add students and then just type in their email, okay? And usually their email will show up here. Just type in their full email if it's not a drop down menu. And then all you need to do is click on that invite button right down there. And it will send an invitation to them to your class. Now, let's jump into that student view I'm going to show you right now. So, this is the email that you're going to get. This is what it's going to look like. So you're going to get the email. It's very simple, very straightforward. Hey, Professor Nez has invited you to be in this class. You just click that giant blue join button. And there you go. Sometimes Google will do this beautiful thing for you. And it'll just kind of um, give these pop ups that allow you to understand a little bit more about this. And so you can see right here, one of these pop-ups is, you know, just happened right here. Invite students to your class by using that class code right there. And you can just click got it once you understand that. So sticking to the stream, we're gonna go through each one of these, but sticking to the stream part. So this is where you can actually, you know, like I said, this is the big uh, main kind of hub for your class where all communications uh, are really seen. And you can organize this later on and you can organize it in any way that you want. You can kind of identify. Always remember this, that if you click on this little gear icon in the top right hand corner, you can always, again, you can edit your class name, class description, section, room, subject. Um, you can also go down here in the general section. Here's the class code. You can click on this right here. You can display it. You can copy it. You can even reset it and disable it once you've got all your students in your classroom. Just for an extra security measure, you can disable that so that nobody else can add your class. And then right here, you'll see right here where it says students can post and comment. If you click on that arrow down there, you can change how that uh, you know, appears and how that feature is enabled because, you know, if you're like me, you know, you've got students sometimes that can get a little bit haywire with the posting and commenting. And so if you want to kind of control this and this is what's beautiful about Google Classroom, it really gives you all the control in the world. You can actually customize this any way that you want so that you really can uh, enforce um, your own kind of classroom and make it very, very much your own. And so you could even say students can only comment, you know, and it'll automatically save like that. Uh, or you can say, you know, only teachers can post and comment. That really will clean things up. And I'm just going to go back to the default setting right there. Students can post and comment. Um, classwork on the stream, this next tab right here in the general uh, if you click on this right here, you're going to see another drop down menu where you can really um, hide notifications and that really cleans up your stream. Stream, again, is that major hub. That's the main kind of highway and byway of your course. Uh, or you can, you know, I'm just going to keep it on the default showing attachments and details. If you're somebody who, um, you know, uh, sends out a lot of information, posts a lot of announcements, posts a lot of attachments on the stream. Uh, and you know, you've got kind of a cluttered sort of stream this there's some options here uh, that I just mentioned before where you can clean that up and streamline that even more. Um, you know, you could even show deleted items, items that you've deleted. You can toggle this on or off if you want. Uh, and, and then this beautiful brand new feature that just came out in April, you can generate an automatic link that now Google Classroom supports Google Meet, which Google Meet is basically Google's version of Zoom video conferencing. And that can all be integrated within your classroom which is fantastic and again you can always go to the um 
I apologize. It does not automatically save. So you have to click save over here in the top right hand corner when you're ready to uh, when you're ready to save that. Make sure that you click that save button. Uh, and so uh, you can also work on your grading calculation. So you know you can you could always click on um, you know no overall grade total points weighted by category. So you can really customize and you can even add graded categories. You know you can add um, a default you know. Uh, category for your for your uh, 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 graded assignments it's just it's a fantastic fantastic tool that you can use okay and when you're ready to get out of here just click on that X right here next to class settings and you and it'll ask you it'll even prompt you your changes have not been saved so you can click cancel or discard if you don't want to save anything um, you know I must have uh, okay here let me just X out of this real fast and now I should be able to, I'll just click save. And now let's get back to, uh, again, you can go back to your class. So for example, I'll just leave a quick announcement. This is what I do. And look, again, here's another pop-up telling you exactly, it's very easy. These are just like uh, bots uh, and artificial intelligence that Google has implemented, almost like Google Assist, where you know these uh, handy guides and handy pop-ups, informative tabs will open up and pop up to let you know how you can do this. You can choose when to share this post with your class, post work to students right away, pick a date, save a draft and finish later. When you're done reading that prompt, you can just click on got it. So this is really, really cool. Um, you can, so it's like, so for example, one of the first things I always do is I will have a welcome message, right? So just for the sake of this demo, I'll make this very fast, but I'll just say, welcome to, you know, fall 2020 for business com, right? Uh, 101 or whatever. I mean, obviously I'd put more thought into this. You can also, this is what's really cool is you could attach, let's say you want to attach a syllabus. You want to attach a YouTube video, by the way, guys, if you didn't know this, Google owns YouTube. So the integration, you want to talk about interactive learning. You want to talk about three-dimensionalizing your teachings, really giving that multimodal, multimedia, powerful, effective methodology for helping your students understand certain things. YouTube is probably one of the most amazing platforms for, you know, especially, I'm, I'm just thinking right now at the top of my head, if you're a history teacher, all the videos on, let's say you're, you're teaching a topic on, you know, the founding fathers. There's tons of videos that you could link from YouTube. You just click on that YouTube link right there. And as a matter of fact, I'll do that right now. This window pops open where you can do a video search or if you have the actual URL, you can copy and paste that here. So let's just do, um, since I mentioned Founding Fathers, I'll just type in Founding Fathers and then click on that search tab and watch this, you guys. This is so cool. So look, you've got this, you've got all these videos. It's so, so easy. You know, since Hamilton's so popular, I'll just click on this right here and I'll click on that video. And then what you wanna do is click on the add button right down there. And then look at that, you guys. Boom, with my welcome message, I can add a video that gives a brief overview. Let's say it's a video that you've created for your classroom that introduces you to your classroom, which you can actually do with uh, Google Meet or Zoom. I have links in the description showing you how to do that. Let's also add a file here. So I'll go into my Google Drive. You can also um, link a, a, a website link, uh, link any article or anything like that that you have online. Also, you can just click on file here, which goes to your computer. Google Drive is a great kind of um, added beautiful uh, um, feature that, that really lends itself to, just like YouTube, really lends itself to Google Classroom. So I'll click on this and I'll just kind of, it'll show all these files. So I'll just kind of, you know, I'll, I'll just put, um, I'll just put a file in here. Like I'll just put this, this right here just to kind of have it there. And so look, you can have, you can have a file or syllabus that will be attached and I'll just, I'll, now this is what the, the pop-up was saying is let's say I wanted to save this. Let's say I'm not ready. Maybe there's more links. I can save that draft. I can schedule it. If I click on schedule, very easy. I don't want this announcement to go out right away. I can schedule this. Let's say I want this announcement to go out. You can see when I'm recording this, but let's say I want this announcement to go out on the very first Sunday 
of, uh, you know, uh, course uh, of the semester. And, and you can even type in any time that you want. Let's say I, I want this to go out at 6 a.m. instead of 8 a.m. And then you just click schedule. Right now, I'm just going to post this uh, just so it's on there and you can see uh, what it looks like, okay? And so once that's posted, this is what you're going to see. You're going to see this and I'll show you what the student view of that would be. Uh, and so let's go into that student view right now. This is what the student view looks like. Parents, students, this is for you. And again, look at these helpful pop-ups. If you want to share something with your class, again, you can disable this as a teacher if you want to. But um, let's just say here's a cool thing that you can put as a student or as a parent. Just say, you know, hello, uh, my name is, you know, Timmy, and I'm excited to be a part of the class, right? Something like that, let's say. And you just post that. You can also add an attachment too. Let's say you have a bio or a picture even. That's kind of cool. Uh, you know, you can attach that as a student and that gets posted. But so this is what you're going to see is you're going to see, uh, you know, if you click on this um, assignment tab that the professor just posted earlier, you can click on this message, okay? Or you can copy the link. And so you're going to click here and it's going to take you to this video right here. You can watch this video on Alexander Hamilton. Uh, I'll pause that or I'll, I'll turn off the volume. I'm not sure if you guys can hear that. But, um, you know, this that's the video that obviously you want to watch. And obviously there'll be more instructions on that. And then, you know, as a student, you know, you can click on classwork and you can see that there's no classwork here. People, you can see, oh, there's Professor Nez. Uh, he's our teacher, and then there'll obviously be more students added there, and you'll see uh, uh, more students. So that's the student view of that. Getting back to this people tab here, and, and just remember, anytime you want to do any kind of action, click on that, you know, um, three dotted line right there, and you can email a student directly. You can communicate everything that you want to do directly within uh, you know, Google Classroom. It's just really fantastic and simple and easy and seamless. Okay, now let's go into, let's go back to stream. Um, and so we've talked about how to understand how the stream works, announcements, perhaps, you know, some of the times I like to, what I like to do with stream, this is talking about my, from my own experience using Canvas and Blackboard and Moodle, and I love Google Classroom, is I will send out, you know, um, helpful, complimentary, supplementary documents, articles, videos that will help with the assignments, give more context to what the students are going to be learning that week. And so um, always know that you, you don't have to use this super intensively. I'm a big believer in keeping things super simple. Try to simplify it as much as possible and use the stream feature and ability to communicate with your students extremely, uh, 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 you know, uh, sparsely, I would say. And so if you click on this, this tab right here too, you can also edit this later. So if I wanted to edit this, I could edit the title. I could even click on these X's right here to take out certain things and then just make sure that you click. Maybe I wanted to add something else. Also, don't forget, you can click here and you can actually be more specific and uh, showcase this uh, for specific students. Let's say if some students are working on a group project that you have, maybe you have some context or some materials and documents that you want to send to certain students. Or, you know, if you don't want to, uh, if you don't, uh, if it doesn't matter to you, you just click on all students and then just make sure that you click um, save right after that. And so once you click save, um, that'll get saved right there. And so that's kind of the gist of the stream section. Now let's go into classwork. This is where we get into the meats and potatoes of everything. This is where the, this is the real nitty gritty. And so you can see here, it says assign work to your class here, create assignments and questions, use topics to organize classrooms into modules or units. That's super, super important. I'm gonna talk about that in a second. Uh, and you can order it the way you want your students to see it. You have a class drive folder here, Google Calendar and Google Meet. Again, um, I'll talk more extensively about that in just a second. This is literally Google's version of Zoom. 
that's already integrated into the platform. It's completely free. You can interact with your students. You can do video conferencing, live streaming. You can record and have it integrated into Google Classroom. So if people miss your class or there's an emergency or what have you, God forbid, in the times that we're living in, it seems like there's an emergency every two minutes. Um, everything is just beautifully orchestrated and uh, left in this one beautiful organized platform. And so they can watch it later. They can watch it at their convenience. And they don't have to remember anything. They can hit pause. They have to go to the bathroom. They want to eat something. Something comes up. Maybe one of them feels sick. They can pause it. This is beautiful. So click on create. And let's talk about how to uh, what the, what this looks like. So you can create an assignment, a quiz assignment, a question, or material, which is really going to be great for understanding the different modules or uh, topic. So I'm going to say topic to st just to start, and it's going to say add a topic. So this topic, I'm just going to say I'm going to type I'm going to call this week one uh, week one overview, right? And so uh, you can also change this. You could do like, um, you know, uh, introductory essay topic or research topic or, um, you know, if you want to, if you want to, uh, you know, let's say you're teaching a math class, this would be um, calculus or beginning algebra or, you know, times tables, whatever you want to do. So I'm going to click on week one overview and then you see that that gets created in the classwork tab and then if I click this little hamburger um, you know uh, dotted line here this is where you can actually rename it again you can always edit this later right and so what you want to do is you have your topic right there it's set and then what you can do is you can create uh, assignments that will go into that specific topic Right. So within your assignments, you can see here by the you can see here by the um, you can see here. It says within the assignments, you can add, create docs, slides, sheets, drawings and forms. Just click on got it when you got that. And so here this is this is the, an assignment that you can actually uh, create just by clicking. Um, let's let's go with um, just by clicking on title here. So I'm going to just say for, for the sake of mine. Um, audience analysis project, which is actually a, a topic that uh, an assignment that I used, uh, and um, so easy, guys, so easy. And so, uh, and you get other. Look at this, drop, drag, and drop topics. You get all these cool pop-ups that Google helps. And then, obviously, you would put instructions here. You know, identify just really fast. Identify target audiences. Uh, for you know business um, marketing or something like that and then here's where it gets really cool is you can click on uh, right here this is where it gets really easy you can add your prompt just by clicking here again you can link it to a, if you have an outside external source a file from your computer a Google Drive you can also add YouTube videos here too you can also click on create okay and you can actually create a doc, a slide, a sheet, a drawing, or form that relates to this assignment, which is awesome, right? And so then over here, uh, and this actually also saves it automatically. And so over here, you're going to see um, a, a little, um, over here, you're going to see a list of a tab here so that you can customize this assignment. And so you can click on here again. Is this for all students or maybe it's just for one specific student or or it's it's, you know, uh, you're going to obviously have multiple students here. How many points do you want this to be? You can you can make it an ungraded assignment. Um, you can do any you can you can you can list what due date. You can list what due date you want it to be. You know, when do you want this to be due? You just click on that arrow. A calendar pops open. Um, and then this is where you can click, where do you want this assignment to go? Uh, I'm going to put this in week one overview, or you could even create a topic, but I'm going to place it in week one overview. And also you can add a rubric. You can add a rubric that you created from sheets, create a rubric or reuse a rubric. So if I click on reuse a rubric, there may be a rubric that you already created, but I didn't. And so it's saying there's no rubric found. So what you'd want to do is you'd want to probably create a rubric or import one from Sheets now that you downloaded it to Sheets. Just fantastic. And then over here, 
you're going to click on, uh, well, actually, I got to go back to, so put all students. And then over here, you're going to see this little arrow say, do you want to schedule this? Do you want to save it? Or do you want to assign? I'm going to go ahead and click assign. And right now it's assigning this. And so this is what's really cool is you're going to be able to see in week one overview, I'll show you what this looks like in the student view, but in, you're going to be able to see in week one audience analysis, this is what we're going to be doing. It's due on this date. You can create modules, which is just absolutely fantastic. And it's very easy just by clicking that create. You can create quiz assignments, questions, material resources, and create new topics. It's just fantastic. The topics really are, um, you know, the kind of headers for each one of the modules, but it's super, super easy. You can assign the grades. It, everything, by the way, when you go click on that grades tab right here, this is where you'll be able to see that you can set up your grading, uh, you can set up your grading uh, schedule and your grading, your grade book, essentially for the entire, uh, for the entire course. And so uh, you've got, you know, this right here and you can, you can grade uh, uh, Professor Nez, you can view submission. Uh, it's just fantastic. You can add comments just if you're used to Blackboard or Canvas or anything like that. It's so, so super easy. So I'm going to give myself a 99 because I'm awesome. And you can also add here, if you look over here at this tab, you can add a comment bank too. So you can save comments for easy use and add comments. So for example, uh, what I'd like to do is I will add uh, a comment here. So I will add, add to bank uh, and I will say... Um, Let's just say something very simple like uh, nice nice um, use of resource, okay? Sources or something like that. I'll click add and then that would be a, uh, and then that would be something that I can reuse. Look at this. That would be something that I can reuse. If I click on this right here, I can copy that to clipboard and add that to the written assignment right there. Isn't that great? And then I can click also here, I can click on when do I want, uh, do I want to return this submission now, return multiple submissions for multiple students. It's fantastic. Just click on return and student will be notified and can check grade, any grade that you've left and then just click uh, return. See how cool that is? And now I'm going to go into the student view so you can see what that looks like. Okay, we're in the student view right now. And you can see that once you sign in and you type in the code or you get the invite, and it remembers this too, you can click and see. We always start with the stream, but look at this. If you click on classwork, you, there's going to be a tab. Look how awesome Google is. There's going to be a tab here that says view your work. And you're going to be able to see what grade you got, you know, and there's different tabs here. You can look at all, you can look at assigned, returned. This was obviously returned, my audience analysis. What's missing too? You have no items missing. It really streamlines it for students as well, which is just fantastic. And so uh, it's just, it's just terrific. And if you want to go back to the course as a student, you just click on business communication. It automatically goes back to that stream section, which is just awesome. Super easy for students, super easy for parents, not much to it. Everything is really streamlined. You only have a few tabs to work with. Okay, guys, now that we've kind of done a, a brief overview of everything, I want to get a little bit more in depth. I promise you this is the ultimate tutorial on Google Classroom, and I was not kidding. I was not fibbing. And so um, I want to go back, like focus on, so we're right now we're in the stream feed. Remember, stream is kind of like your main feed, your main avenue of communication, sort of like the storefront to your Google Class, uh, where all kind of exchanges are uh, divulged and that's where really the kind of main hub and highway and byway of your course classwork is where your kind of modules are assignments quizzes things of that nature people this is where you can monitor your students find out you know uh, who's what what's the teacher how do you get a hold of somebody how do you add somebody who are the participants in your class and then grades this is where you can kind of um, really, it's like your digital grade book. This is where you can monitor grades, you can uh, attribute grades, add comments, uh, and, and the students can also get an idea of what's going on. Now, let's go to Classroom, and I just want to kind of give you a little bit more in-depth um, of how I, obviously, this is, again, this is not a real Google Classroom for me, but I mean, 
I use the same exact, everything that I'm showing you is the same exact, um, you know, curriculum that I use for my Google Classroom. So I want to click on create because I want to give you a little bit more in depth of how you can organize your Google class so your students can really have a seamless, um, easy to follow process and really get the most out of it and learn the most. So let's click on create. And what I want to do is I want to talk about some different tabs here. I'm going to talk about assignment. We are, I already created an assignment for you guys. I'll talk about quiz assignment in a second, question, uh, material, reuse post, and topic. But what I want to do is I want to, first of all, I want to create another topic. And so we're going to call this topic um, course documents. I want to actually allow you to have a folder where you can actually, um, you know, have a bunch of files. This is exactly what I do. Again, you can customize it yourself, but um, have an actual kind of space, if you will, uh, or digital sort of storage uh, box for all of your, you know, your syllabus, your prompts, any kind of course related documents. So just click add. And so there, you're going to see that this got created right here at the top. And by the way, guys, you can you can move this around. Like you can have course documents come up to the top. You can have course that you can move the weeks around. You can just so just for the sake of speed and time, you can type in all your modules and then don't worry about organizing them chronologically or you can always change that. You can always change everything. OK, so we're going to click on that little three dotted line. And what we're going to do is we're going to. Um, we're going to, this is just to show you, this is where you can rename it. You can copy the link. You can move it up automatically like that or move it down, right? And so this is, this is kind of, this is kind of what, uh, it's sort of like, again, it's like creating a new folder. Now watch this. I'm going to go back into create and I'm going to type in material. Now watch this. So you're going to be open to this window and you can see on the left, there's a title and description down here below. And then over here to the right, you're going to see a tab for, you know, sort of uh, execution purposes. And where do you want to direct this material? So what I'm going to do is in the title here, I'm going to type in. Um, so I'm going to type in a syllabus, right? So I'm going to type in syllabus and then you can add a description if you want. Basically, you know, overview of the course schedule um, policies, etc. Right. I mean, I'm just for the sake of, for the sake of the demo, I'm going to go fast and you can definitely attach, you know, obviously if you, if you wanted to, you can, and I would, if I were, you would attach a file or I would attach, uh, you can attach anything. If you have it in your Google drive, attach the syllabus. Now here's, here's the important part. Now, if you go over here, you're going to see on the right, um, obviously, you know, you can decide who you want to send this to, but here's the real interesting thing. So you see where it says topic. So remember how I created that new topic. So watch this. I'm going to put this inside course documents. Remember how I said course documents is that main hub, that main kind of sort of um, digital storage box, if you will, or digital safe of all course related documents. So just click on that. And that's where you're going to send this syllabus, obviously with an attachment. Uh, and I'll just, I'll kind of, you know what, just for the sake of this, I'll attach something really quick from my, from my uh, Google drive, just so it looks it looks legit. And I'm sure I've got a syllabus somewhere in here, don't I? I'm sure I do. Uh, let's see here. Syllabus, syllabus. So I can also search. So let's type in, duh, I can also search. So I'll type in syllabus. Okay. So, so here you go. I'm just going to, I'm just going to put that in there, insert that. And then, so you'll see, um, you'll see uh, there's the attachment right there. So, right. So I'm going to post this I can choose when to post this, obviously, but I'm going to go ahead and post this now. And so that's going to get posted immediately. And then watch this. You can add to this, too. Now you've got this hub. So not only do you have and let me let me let me show you just really quickly. Let me show you what that looks like on the student side really quickly. OK, so let's jump into that. OK, guys, so here we're on the student view. Parents, students, this is really important for you. So you can see like in the stream, uh, it gets posted right there. Professor Nez posted new material syllabus and boom, I can click on that and I can check out the syllabus. If I go into classwork as a student, I'll see that new folder course documents. I can click on that and uh, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to add more. Let's go back to teacher view. 
So it, this looks like a, you know, a real legit kind of folder that I would create for my class and that you can do for yours. So check this out. This is so awesome and so convenient. Okay, so I'm back over here in the teacher view. And so here we go. I'm going to go back and this is again, I'm just going to make this as real as I can. I'm going to click in there material. Okay. And let's say this is audience analysis um, prompt, right? Group project or something like that in parentheses. I'm trying to do this fast so I don't take up all your guys's time. But look at that. Um, I've got that. So watch this. So and you know what, I'll add a couple of things and, and, and I'm not going to attach anything. I'm just going to uh, well, you know what, actually, I kind of do want to attach something just so it looks kind of more um, just so it kind of looks more legit. Uh, but yeah, so so touch this. So I got two selections. Look at that. So I, I, I got two selections here. You can add more files, right? So you can, I, I, by the way, I can also add a YouTube video. I can also add a video if I want to have a video that talks about the, the prompt, right? You know, maybe it's a lecture. And then again, we're going to go over here. And where do I want this to go? I want this to go to course documents. So I'm going to click that. When do I want this to post? Well, why not right now? I'm going to post that and then watch this. So now I've got more down there. Boom. And so I'm going to go back to create. I just want this to be as fast as possible. You get the idea. Uh, and let's just type in um, uh, midterm, midterm prompt. Okay. Just for an example, I won't attach anything, but basically I want this to go back over into course documents and then we're going to post that. And so boom, by the way, your students are going to get, so now see how it's looking more you know, uh, it's looking more and more like a class. It's looking more and more involved, more and more progressive uh, and more developed now. And so basically that's something that you can, that's, that's, a, that's a hub that you can do. And again, I'm a big fan, guys. Keep it as simple as possible. Don't overcomplicate things. I mean, you know, there's, there's such a thing as perfectionism. There's such a thing as over organization or over compartmentalization or overdoing it. Keep it as simple as possible. So let's go back into create. Watch this. I'm going to add, um, I'm going to add another topic here. Okay. And what I'm going to do for this topic is I'm just going to say, let's just call this week two. And then I'm going to have some dates, right? So we did week one overview. I'm going to do week two. And then I'm trying to think of when my students start. Let's say the first week has already been covered, 8.15. So we'll say 8.31 to, I don't have a calendar in front of me, uh, I don't know, 9.7. Some of you guys start after Labor Day, I know that. So watch this. I'm going to click Add. Boom, you're going to see that module right there. And then here's a cool thing. I'm going to click Create. And let's say I'm going to create a quiz assignment. Now watch this. Let students know how their assignment will be evaluated. Got it. Now watch this. Now, this, you know, can be, so for week two, I can call this, let's say, reading quiz. Let's go over here to the title, reading quiz, okay? And then I'll put instructions in there. I'll add, you know, a, uh, a prompt or what have you. And look at this. Classroom can import grades from assignments. Grade importing automatically limits each form to one response per user. Look at that. There's a blank quiz, Google form. Uh, I can actually, you know, create uh, a Google uh, quiz form that uh, is very, very easy. If I click create here, I can click, I can click on forms and then boom, I can create a new form here and that's where I can go in there and just literally follow the steps. And once this gets saved, it's automatically saved into your uh, you know, into your uh, Google Drive and into your classroom, and you can you can you can then add that later. And then look over here, you've got points, right? Let's just say this is um, worth ten points. It's a reading quiz, so probably not going to be that many points. There's a due date on it. Boom, boom, boom. I'll put, uh, you know, I'll put, uh, let's say September fourteenth. Uh, boom. I can add a rubric if I want to all students. And then I can click over here on either assign or I can schedule that, right? I'm going to go ahead and click assign because I, I'm, we're building out this Google classroom and I want this Google. So look at this. Let's go back to student view. Let's see what the students see. Now, if I click stream here on mine, you're going to see that, look, this stream is getting more heavily involved. You see how everything populates automatically. Don't forget, guys, you're going to get notifications for all the changes, all the replies, so you don't miss anything. 
So for example, let me show you the student view right now. And professors and teachers, you're going to get your notifications. You're going to see those immediately. But let me show you what you get. Like every time that a new module is created, a new assignment, anytime something's graded, something's added to the stream, you're going to get notified. Let me show you really quickly what you get, students. So you'll see here, you know, you're going to get a notification. Look, Professor Nez just posted a new assignment. And then you can open that here if you feel like. You're going to see here, Professor Nez posted a new material, midterm prompt. You can So every time that you get, you know, something, anytime the professor, teacher, instructor adds something new or even takes action on something new, you're going to get notified for, notified for that. Now, that might be annoying after a while, but it's just a great way to really you know, compensate for um, that lack of interaction and personal intimate contact that you usually get when you can talk to the instructors and teachers. I think having everything documented and having everything, you know, there's a there's a nice um, lineage and, and chronological uh, chain link to everything. I think that's really nice to have that just so you don't have to remember anything. You know, to, again, it's just, it's beautiful. Google Classroom makes it so easy. Okay, going back into classwork. So now we covered um, click on create. We covered a uh, quiz assignment. We covered assignment. We covered material. How about question? Let's click on question right here. This is a great way for you to assign short answer quizzes or like if you see over here, like let's just call this, um, let's just call this a, um, you know, so the question will be, um, you know, uh, what um, methodologies did uh, Socrates cover, let's pretend I'm teaching a philosophy class, uh, Socrates cover in his Socratic method, right? So you could actually add um, instructions here optionally, like answer in 500 words or less or something like that. You can add a prompt, you can add a video, you can create a document slide or something like that, right? But here's the cool part, like look over here to the right where it says short answer. I can click on this drop down menu and I can also make this multiple choice. And then you can add points to this. So you can add option one, you can rename this, right? Option one, you know, you could say something like, um, you know, line of questioning or something like that. I don't know. I'm not, I'm not really that familiar with uh, the Socratic method. I mean, not really. Uh, number two, you know, introspection or something like that. I don't know. And then, and then, uh, you know, and then, and then once you're done with that, you can go over here to the right and you can assign points to this, right? So maybe you could say ungraded. Let's just say ungraded. Uh, um, we'll say due date. Um, you know, let's just say today's date. Uh, as of this recording. Um, and then I can put this in, you know, week two, I can put this in week three, students can see the class summary. And then um, I can click on ask the question right up here. And so that gets automatically thrown into week two, right? So let's look at the student view and see what they see. So if you look over here, let me refresh the page. So you'll see right here. Now you can click on students. Okay, so first of all, if you go to the stream, it's going to notify you in the stream and you can actually answer. So let's just say, I'm going to say introspection and then I'm going to turn that in and then look at that. You won't be able to make changes to your answer after you submit. So I'm going to say, okay, I'm pretty confident in that answer. That's something good to know. And then, um, you know, the professor will get a notification and it's great. You know, you can do short answer. You can do a, a multiple choice Again, there's so many different tools if you go into a classroom that you can uh, apply and engage and, and be more interactive in an online distance uh, remote learning environment. And so Google Classroom really, really does some great stuff for you. Okay, let's go back here to uh, the teacher's view. We're going to click on create and we're going to cover the last thing, which is reuse post. So what is reuse post all about? So reuse post is a basically a methodology that you can use that you can actually select from let's say you've been teaching on Google Classroom for several semesters, you can choose a class, 
So we're just gonna click a class. You can choose a prompt. It's just amazing how it saves everything. You can create new attachments, copies of all new attachments if you wanted to, uh, and just really kind of repurpose the entire course. But let's say you click on that. You can click over here on reuse, and then it's gonna ask you, what do you wanna reuse it in, and where do you wanna reuse it? And you can reuse that assignment in the current course that you're in. It's just absolutely fantastic. And then once you're done, you know, as you guys know with the title, if you want to edit it or modify it, uh, maybe you don't want this to go to everybody. Maybe you don't want this to go to a specific module. You click post and bada boom, bada bang. I mean, it's just, it's just absolutely beautiful. Think of Google Classroom of, you know, if, if, you know, remote learning and hundred percent online learning does end anytime soon. Uh, and I know a lot of you guys are doing hybrid learning too. This is to me, this is the future of teaching. This is the future. I mean, the future is yesterday. This has been going on for a long time, but it's got to be something that is more adopted on a larger scale um, so that you can adapt to the 21st century teachings and curriculum and ability to reach the 21st century end user. And so, um, you know, whether or not we go back to in-person is irrelevant. You know why? Because you could use Google Classroom. You could use these online formats. I use Blackboard, Moodle. I use Canvas with all my in-person classes because it's just a great way to digitize everything, have everything in one spot, have no pro not no no wasted paper, no need to uh, uh, you know uh, use any paper. As a matter of fact, uh, I mean we're living in 2020 now, guys. It's it's over. It's over. Gone are the days of paper, you know, uh, uh, assignments, paper syllabus, syllabi. You shouldn't even be using paper anymore. This is the ultimate hub. I, I haven't used paper syllabus, a paper assignment, a paper quiz in probably 10 years. I really haven't. Once I became abreast of these amazing platforms and these amazing tools that I can use in the online ecosystem, it was game over for me. And, and really, this is something that you can implement for yourself. So even when we do go back to in-person, this is a great supplemental, uh, uh, you know, tool and device that you can use that will enhance, not only not only make you look relevant and make you, um, you know, uh, come across as somebody who understands what end users are really how they operate, what the psychology of your students and how they interact and how they engage, but also this is just a great way to have everything tucked away in one hub so that you don't have to worry about where did I put this, where did I put that, how do I find this or do I have to create an entire file cabinet? This is your digital file cabinet. So I hope that makes sense. And I'm telling you, it's just, it's easy. You see how easy it is to create these things. You see how easy it is to adopt these tools and Google Classroom just makes it super fun, super interactive and convenient. That's the, that's the biggest thing. I really appreciate you checking out this tutorial. I hope you got a lot of value from it. Make sure you watch it over and over again and follow along maybe with your laptop or your computer so you it kind of will make a little bit more sense. And, you know, I hope that you will, you know, subscribe to our channel and consider giving us a like down below. It would really mean a lot to us. It would help us out with the YouTube algorithm. And also, I'm going to be releasing a ton of tutorials. If you're watching this later, way past the publication date, I probably have a bunch of links in the description down below. Make sure you go check out. I've got a ton of playlists on my channel. I'm going to be covering Microsoft Teams, Google Meet, more Google Classroom tutorials, Zoom tutorials. I've got a ton of videos all about career advice, mindset advice, personal branding, online business, using looking good on camera, coming across as professional and presentable on camera, and a whole lot more. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much. I'll see you guys in the next video.